How's it going guys? So we've got some couple of video reviews coming up in the next couple of weeks but I thought I would start with the first one. So just by looking at these two products on the shelf here you will probably guess that I am indeed getting a new MacBook Pro. Uh, it's hard unfortunately to replace my aging one. I got the first Retina MacBook Pro back in 2012 model name MacBook 10 one. Uh, unfortunately it has got a fault with it. It's nothing too major, I could persevere with it but I just thought while well, the time was right I just thought I'd get one anyway. So the fault unfortunately with my MacBook Pro is uh, it doesn't recognise when it's plugged in. The battery indicator doesn't always work so it will just stay at like the one percentage and it doesn't move. Uh, and also it struggles to turn on sometimes. You have to do a reset on it on the VRAM to get it to go. Uh, it's been happening for a couple of months now. I have put up with it for quite a period of time, but I thought enough's enough. So I thought when after I watched the WWDC, uh, I ordered one. So that will be coming in uh, about two weeks' time, as it is a custom order. Uh, unfortunately, it will be taking its time. But I have got the i7, uh, 2.9 gigahertz, got 16 GB of RAM, got a one terabyte SSD, and an AMD. Uh, top of the range graphics card with four gigabytes of VRAM, so yeah, it's going to be pretty good. So unfortunately, though, what follows with that after you spend so much money on the laptop itself comes unfortunately the adapters. Now, Apple and uh, quite a lot of other manufacturers now of computers are kind of all pointing towards USB-C. Um, Apple have USB-C. All you know, just completely, utterly on their MacBook Pro range. You got four USB C ports on there, um, and then the rest you have to buy adapters. Now, I only use two things basically I need an SD card reader, which is where the USB uh, C to USB will come into play, and a USB C to Thunderbolt 2. My Thunderbolt 2 is for my LC2 big uh, 8 terabyte RAID array. Uh, that's Thunderbolt storage, it is super quick. That's the only really things I need. Everything else is wireless. I do have somewhere a Thunderbolt 2 to Ethernet as well, so I can use that as well. But because it's got wireless uh, AC and I have a ubiquity AC uh, access point, I'm going to get pretty decent speeds anyway, so I have no drama. So we're going to have a look at these guys. I did pick these up from Apple. Now, the price on this one is $19.99. So if we just flip them over. Uh, you do get the prices on the back, so we'll just quickly zoom in there so you can have a look. Now, as I say, the USB to USB is £19, and the more expensive Thunderbolt one was £50. Now, I did get these discounted because of where I work, so it wasn't as bad, but they are still quite pricey for what you want. But um, the reason why I got these and not some third part of Amazon is I trust the Apple brand. Um, I did have a MacBook for a very short period of time, um, and that was also USB-C, so I did have to get some adapters then. And the ones I did get on Amazon was the hubs, and I always thought they were very hot and very, very temperamental. So I plugged one thing in, one would then drop out. So I thought, I'm just if you're going to spend that much on a MacBook Pro, you might as well get the proper equipment that you know is safe to work with it, certified, and it's from a brand that you trust. So that's why I went for this. So we're going to unbox it. We're going to unbox the USB one first. This is the most important one. This is where my SD card adapter will go into. Uh, if you want to plug into iTunes, everything else uh, is going to be that. So if we just pull this here, so there's a little green tab here. We simply pull. Pull the plastic where it hangs on the shelf in the Apple Store. And then you get this little tab and just pull. And voila, there it is. Little cable, £20 for a little cable, but it's job done. And quite simply, guys, look, USB-C on one end. And then you got a full size USB on the other end. So nice cable length, I mean it's not too big, I don't want it massive, but at the same time just enough. So this one's the most expensive one. Uh, it's really hard to find Thunderbolt adapters unfortunately. Uh, I think Apple probably have some kind of trademark on it so they only they can sell it, but it is important to me because that's where my main storage is based. So uh, I had to get it. So I thought might as well get the proper one. So, same again, Apple packaging is all pretty much the same. Pull, and then voila. So this one is quite a bit bigger to be honest. If we look at the 
comparison and there is quite a lot of length uh, in the adapter one for this one which is fine I can live with that now if we do look at this one uh, it's stuck down somewhat now there is a green tab here if we pull that that then breaks the plastic which keeps it into place and then we are done so quite a bit of length there is some right on it it's very hard to see which is going to give you some safety information there is your uh, Thunderbolt 2 interface in and then USB-C out so guys it's a very quick look when I do get the MacBook in uh, we're going to switch the video the next video you'll see off the back of this is just some testing um, but speed wise I don't expect to see any issues um, really robust camera that's quite a thick cable as you can see it's got quite it's quite a lot of play on it but it is also quite thick and there is that lovely USB-C interface I do understand why Apple have jumped the ship and kind of just gone for it Apple is known for kind of jumping into things and just going with it like look at lightning everybody was against lightning at first but now look at it you can't get enough of it so USB-C is here to stay guys so we may as well get on board with it it's just to show that the pricey adapters are quite expensive so guys that's been a look at the two adapters USB-C to USB and then USB-C to Thunderbolt 2.